Last, last week, we, we started a study on the ways that we are with Christ. Because the, the word with is, uh, in Greek, is synkete. And it, it is actually where we get our English word, sink. So we are in sync. We want to be, I want to talk about the ways we, we are or should be in sync with Christ. And uh, let's see if I can get this thing. So, uh, obviously, last week we talked about that one way we're with, and I encourage you in Colossians 2 12, and we're on everywhere there is the word with. If you write in your Bible, underline the word with, uh, because that, that's what we're going to be talking about. And, and the Bible says, uh, when we talked about this last year, the, the first which is uh, we've, we've been buried with him in baptism. And obviously, uh, the symbol of baptism is that uh, when you go under the water, it's a symbol of the old man dying. And when you come back up, it, you're a new man. And so, we were also raised with him. We were raised with him through faith and the working of God. And that's what I want to talk about. Faith. It is an, is an awesome thing, but it's also a thing that's hard to understand. You see, people people think, and, they, and I told y'all, you know, that if you want to have faith in Christ, if you want to have salvation, you've got to make the choice to believe. And, and you've got to believe that Jesus Christ is who He says He is, and that, that He can do what He says He can do, which is to save to the utmost. And so the, the problem we have with, with faith is that, you know, believing is just one part of faith. You know, believing is, is just the first part. The, the next thing that comes with faith is obedience. Okay, to be faithful to God, you've got to be obedient. But before even you can have faith in God. See, as humans, there's no inclination in us at all to, to try to seek out God. As a matter of fact, it's our natural instinct to run from God. And I can, I can bear witness to that because I run from God. I met Him when I was 12 and I ran from Him until I was in my 20s. Just kept running from Him because that was my natural inclination to run from God. But it says here, you were also raised up with Him through faith in the working of God. See, faith is the working of God. It's only through God drawing you to Him. To his son that you can have faith. You, you don't have the power to have faith in God. But God will freely give you that faith if you seek it out. And the Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Praise God. That's why the word of God is so important. And I tell you guys all the time. Hey, you, you may think you're here and I'm just rambling on. And you're not going to get anything out of this. But I'm going to tell you the word of God will not return void. It's changing you right now as I speak. The word of God is having an effect on you. And when you walk out of that door, whether you believe it or not, or whether you want to believe it or not, you're going to be different than when you come in this door because God's word has power in it. And listening and hearing God's word is how you build your faith up. And, and so it's the hearing of the word that that God wants us to do. And where does the hearing come from? Well, obviously, you can hear Charlie every Sunday. You can hear him, and you can hear him. You can hear also God's still, small voice when you pray. A lot of us miss out on that. And see, it was also the working of God that raised Jesus from the dead. It was through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ said, you... you Tear this temple down and I will rebuild it in three days. And he was not talking about that, uh, Herod's temple in Jerusalem. He was talking about his own body. He said, if you break this body down, I will raise it up in three days. So the power of new life does not come from us. It doesn't. A lot of people think, well, if I, I go to church and I'll become a moral person, I'll quit cussing, I'll quit drinking, I'll quit cheating on my taxes. And then I'll be good to go. But you see, that's not it. Uh, intellectual assent will not save you. Knowing the facts will not save you. The only thing that will save you is a heart surrendered to Jesus Christ and obedience to the Word of God. Amen. Yes, Lord. So we see that it's, it's that faithful obedience through the working of God that not only raised Jesus from the dead, but it's, it raises us from the dead because we, 
Until we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are spiritually dead. Okay? And, and if you're not saved, I hate to break the news to you, but God does not hear your prayers. I don't care how much you pray. If you're not saved, you're spiritually dead to God. And you can't understand His Word. You can read it, and you can know what the words mean. You can know the facts. But until you are saved and born again by the grace of God, you're not going to be spiritually alive. See, there is one prayer there that God will always hear from the unsaved person. You know what that is? I surrender. The Lord saved me. And he's waiting. He's waiting and listening and watching like the prodigal son's father for you to do that. And then he'll give you new life. You see, that's, that's what being born again, that's what being saved is all about. It's becoming a new creation. When I was saved, um, and I, I'll tell you, I, I got saved, and then, you know, I went to school in Cambridge or whatever. And you, know, you know how Facebook is. You, you can find people on Facebook that you ain't seen in 20 years. Well, I, I did that. I found one of my friends that I used to run around with when I was definitely not uh, doing the Lord's will. And, you know, he says, wow, Charlie, I can't believe you can't preach. i got to come hear you preach. And so he came to hear me preach. And at the end of the service, he walked up to me. He said, Charlie, I don't know who you are anymore. I said, praise God, you ain't supposed to know who I am. Because I'm a new creation in Christ. I've been born again. The old man has died and all things have become new. And you can have that this morning too. But, but I want you to know on the flip side of that. Maybe you've said a prayer. Maybe you've been baptized and walked the aisle or something. But if your life is still the same as it was before and hasn't changed, if you're not a new person, then you don't have salvation. That's not my opinion. That's what the Bible says. It says the old man dies and God makes a new creation out of you. I know that I'm not the same man I used to be and I praise God for that. It's through His working. It's through His power. Just as He raised Jesus Christ from the dead, He raised me from the dead. I was spiritually dead. And He, just as He breathed life into Adam and made him a living soul, He breathed the breath of spiritual life in me and I become alive to God. Yeah. The same thing about it, when you become alive to God, you need to become dead to sin. And that's where the obedience part comes in. Unfortunately, the only way we can be truly obedient uh, is, to, is through the power of the Holy Spirit because we don't have it in us. we got too much of this stuff on us. What's it called? Flesh. Flesh. Yes. But see, the good thing about God, it says, even though you were dead in your trespasses, your transgressions, and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he nevertheless made you alive with Him, having forgiven all your transgressions. We were all spiritually dead. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you are spiritually dead right now. But you can have that new life. You can be brought to salvation. You can, you can have that transforming thing that I have. Jesus Christ transformed my life. Like you wouldn't believe. Everybody's uh, testimony and conversion is not as dramatic as others. But I'll tell you this. If you don't have a testimony, you don't have salvation.
circumcised in your flesh. What needs to be circumcised is your heart. And so what does that mean? That means our heart should be broken for the things that break Jesus Christ. Our hearts should be broken for the lost people out here. We should be searching them out. We should be going into the highways and the hedges like Jesus Christ commanded and seeking out the lost. We, we should be, and not all of us can go to Indonesia and the Philippines, but we can support people that do go there. And in that way, we're spreading the gospel throughout all the world. And, and I want you to know, it, it's, a, it's, so, it, it's nothing like seeing somebody come to salvation. They say, you know, we get, we get a little nervous when the preacher comes to you and says, hey, you want to go out evangelizing with me? Oh, I got, I got a doctor's poor man. I got, I got to re-bristle my toothbrush. The, the straws are coming out my brain. I can't do it. <laughs> but what is evangelism? I mean, all evangelism is is telling people your testimony. You want to lead somebody to Christ? Tell them your life before Christ. Tell them when you met Christ. And tell them what it what did. Because there's a lot of people here that are suffering. There's a lot of people here that are going through some stuff today that need Jesus Christ in their life. There's a lot of people here today that have problems that look like mountains. But I'm telling you, don't focus on the mountains. Focus on Jesus. But the first step is salvation. Yes, we, we are with you. We were dead in sins. And, and we, we got our hearts circumcised. And we were made alive with Jesus. Now see, that's something that's hard to understand. Because my life, the Bible says, is hidden in Christ. And just as a man and a woman get married, they form a union. Okay? And, and when me and Christy got married, I can say it now. Hopefully that speaker's not going to in the nursery. I'll say it real quietly. When me and Christy got married, what was, what was Christy's became mine. And what was mine became mine. <laughs> I can only say that because she's in the nursery. And if that speaker's on, I'm going to be in trouble. But, but that's the way it is with Jesus. We, we have our lives hidden with Christ, and it's more than a relationship. Yes, uh, it's not a religion, it's a relationship, but it's more than a relationship. It's a union. It's where Jesus Christ said the two flesh shall become one. That's what happens. With us and Jesus, we are alive with Him. Our life is His life. His life is our life. And so, and just like with me and Christy, when me and Jesus came in a union together, you know, what was what was mine, all my transgressions and all my sins, I give over to Jesus. Then all His righteousness, all His forgiveness, all His grace, all of His mercy was transferred right over to me. And now when God looks down from heaven, he doesn't see Charlie Ryan a sinner. He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ upon me. Now, does that mean I'm a righteous man? Well, all my righteousness is like what? Filthy rags. And the Greek says that it's manure-covered rags. So that's what my righteousness is like. It's not that I'm a righteous person. It's that God sees me as righteousness because Jesus Christ died on that cross in my place. And it's my hope and my desire that if you're here today and you don't know that new life in Jesus Christ, that you would just, just throw up that white flag and surrender to Him. Surrender to Jesus today as your Lord.